What's going on, military cash flow family? What is going on with you today, Mike? How you doing? Doing good, man. Uh, traveling again. I'm in another hotel, uh, but I'm at the beach. I'm at Wilmington. Here for business, but still, nice place uh, to be, man. It's uh, It was crazy because I was rushing to get into this podcast, but it was well worth it. It was well worth it. So I'm not tripping. What about you, man? What are you up to? Yeah, I'm all right, man. I'm I'm doing okay. We uh had to had to get a new car this weekend. My my uh my car broke down finally. It's a old 2011 Mitsubishi. It was a cash car. I've been holding on to for a little while, and uh, finally finally broke down. So we went ahead and uh got another got another vehicle. So we're good to go now. Um, outside of that, just you know, just life life. You know, just hanging out with the boys, hanging out with the family, enjoying my time, man. Really, really just you know, enjoying the time I have with the family, you start to kind of, you know, relax and really sit back and kind of uh, appreciate what you do have. I'm not sure when the last time you did that or, or how often you do that, or even if you're listening, how often you do that. But every now and again, you should really, really, really just, you know, take, take 10, 15 minutes and really just sit back and think about all that you have. I know there's so much going on in the world, right? And it's, it's hard sometimes uh, to, to, to really, you know, consider the things that you do have. It's easy to, to think about the things that you don't have or the things that's hard, the things that you're, you know, you're kind of going through tough times, right? Um, but it's it's hard to sit, not, not hard. Sometimes we often don't um, sit back and really appreciate the things that we do have. So um, I, I, I hope that you do that if you're listening, you know what I mean? It's, it's so true, guys. I mean, it's, I'm so glad you said it because even, I've experienced myself just recently too, having high levels of stress. And then I remember that it was self-inflicted. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I did it to myself. If I had to just, you know, pause and just appreciated what I've accomplished as far who who's around me right now, one, that stress wouldn't be there. I would have enjoyed the moment more. So I'm really glad you said that. And I really do hope that people were, were catching on to that and listening to that. Uh, that's just one more, one more good nugget, seriously, uh, in conjunction with what, with some of the guests we're talking about today, guys, this is going to be a damn good episode. Now I'm I'm hyped up again for the hype of the guests. Yo, man, uh, today today we had a, a great episode. Dude. We had a couple of the Air Force guys come on the show today with Vectored Equity, and uh, we, we were sharing their they were sharing their story on how they um, closed on their their first 14 units. They started syndicating. They they talked about some of the some of the pitfalls that they went through, and they kind of shared exactly how they transitioned into. Um, getting into the multifamily space, what they did to prepare themselves for, and then how they were able to close on that deal and some of the thought processes that they went through uh, while while doing that. So this, and then we talked about goal setting, which if you guys know, I mean, you guys probably know this, we, I start to get really, really hyped up and passionate about goal setting and, and goals in general, right? So uh, we did have a nice little discussion on that as well. So I think this is just an episode filled with gold and filled with gems. So make sure you have a pen and paper uh, when you're listening Absolutely. to Mike. Yeah, I mean, even with that little cherry on top that Dan just dropped about, you know, uh, really valuing your quality time and being uh, grateful. There's so many nuggets that are dropped in this episode. Most of it has to do with mindset, um, with how, how you pick your partners and just things to consider that they are a living, breathing example of what you can accomplish in less than 12 months with the right mindset. So without, I, I can't do it any justice. So obviously without further ado, let's get to it. What's going on, Military Cash Flow? Today, we got a great episode for you. We got Ricardo and Pat on. Um, would you guys mind introducing yourself, letting us know a little bit about yourselves and what you're doing? Yeah, what's up, guys? Uh, Dan, Mike, thanks for having us, first and foremost. Very appreciative of the opportunity to be on the podcast. Uh, I'm Ricardo. Um, I'm in Tucson, Arizona, stationed at Davis Month, and I got a wife, two girls, 13 and 6. Uh, kind of grew up in uh, all over the place with my dad, who was in the military as well. So kind of a Air Force brat, if you will. Uh, my sibling is in the uh, Air Force as well. Um, so I kind of called Tucson home. I went to college in Tampa, University of South Florida, go Bulls. And then I was sent to uh, undergraduate pilot training where I met Pat in 2014. So uh, I've been in the Air Force for seven years now. Uh, like I said, uh, Davis Monthan, I currently fly the EC-130 Compass Call. We do some electronic attack. Uh, and, uh, in the last year we, we jumped headfirst into a multifamily real estate. So, uh, happy to be here. Yeah. And like Ricardo said, I'm Pat, uh, 
currently stationed in Shaw Air Force Base, Sumter, South Carolina, flying F-16s. Uh, this year has been awesome uh, getting to start this business and really realize some dreams with Ricardo. Uh, we started Vectored Equity, uh, focusing on multifamily uh, syndications, looking to expand our portfolio. Uh, currently have 14 units that we closed on a few months ago uh, out in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, leveraging Ricardo's boots on the ground there as kind of our competitive advantage and just been working on networking, growing the business, growing our investor base, and really just trying to add value where we can. Uh, so we're real happy to be here. Hopefully we can uh, help some guys active duty or, uh, or retired or some vets uh, get started and get involved. Nice, Love nice. it, man. You know, it's a common thread. I've, I've seen a lot of officers, specifically pilots, kind of walk into that multifamily syndication space. And, you know, uh, I think in the military, pilots are known are, are known to be a little bit more intelligent, you know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, um, would you guys say, and before I'm, I'm going to back up a little bit and get your get you guys a story, but would you say that what you do in the syndication realm, it takes a lot of brain power? Or is it something that you guys systematize to make it fairly simple? So I think... I think a lot of people, when they think about, oh, you're a pilot, Air Force, military, that doesn't, how does that translate into real estate? But I think whether it's pilots or whatever you're doing in the military, you have kind of that mindset, you have that management, that's that leadership, that structure, and you're able to put that into any field you want to be in. And I think it just so happens that it works very well with real estate. Like you said, I know several other pilots that do this also. I would say it's not necessarily we don't have the biggest brains Ricardo and I aren't any smarter than anyone else we just I think have that leadership that system or not, that system in place and Ricardo and I happen to work well very uh, our partnership works really well on more of the the numbers engineer background Ricardo's more of that business networking kind of background and you guys made it work, man. So let's hear about the backstory, man. How did we get to real estate in the first place? So we're in the Air Force. We're doing pilot training. I mean, I know that that is um, a tough, tough job within itself, right? That takes a lot of training. And you, I think at one point you talked about our, we, we talked offline, you were saying you were coaching pilots, I believe. So from that to getting involved in real estate in the first place, how did that transpire? Yeah, man, I'll start it off. So you know, like I said, Pat and I kind of met about seven years ago. And as soon as we met, we kind of hit it off almost like kindred spirits, you know what I mean? So one of the topics that Pat and I would always talk about, it, it had to do with our finances. Um, and it, it starts off with TSP in many respects, right? Hey, what, what are you in? You in the Roth, you in the traditional? Um, what funds are you investing in? And, and we kind of branched out into looking at different finances and how we could essentially make our money grow. So fast forward several years, friendship grows. We, uh, like you talked about, stay at Columbus's uh, first assignment instructor pilots or FAPES. Uh, and so Pat was instructing students on the T-38 Talon. I was instructing students on the T-6 Texan II. Um, but, you know, you fly all day and then you chill at night. You know, Pat and I would hang out on the weekends or whatever. And um, so I, I got sent here to Tucson. So PCS to Tucson, to Davis Monthan and, and Pat to, to South Carolina. And no kidding. It's as simple as Pat texted me one day. It was, it was about a year ago ish. And he's like, bro, he's like, we got to do something else, man. We got to, we got to put our, our capital, our money to work in a manner in which it hasn't done. It hasn't, you know, worked. And now gr granted last year was actually a phenomenal year as it closed, closed the year out from TSP return perspective. But uh, Pat knows me. I know Pat very well. And if there's anything that we're, we're, we're not shy. Uh, and we're go-getters and we're ready to make something happen. So I'm like, he's like, let's, let's get into real estate. I'm like, dude, let's do it. So we started off uh, with the mentality of a single family residence, like one a year, man. Let's just do one single family a year. And then in 20 years, we'll have 20 houses and there'll be three quarters of the way paid off and we'll have enough cash flow to supplement our retirement as maybe 05s, 06s or whatever. Uh, and then, and then hit, that's the jackpot, you know what I mean? Hit the dream. And then we have our TSP on the side, like, man, that's the American dream. You know what I mean? So it all starts with a concept. It starts with an idea. And then <clears throat> um, just to consolidate the latter end of that, um, we did start off with single family. We looked into single family. We made several offers on single family, albeit low ball offers. 
uh, th those were super blessings uh, in disguise and in retrospect for us because it took a conversation with a master sergeant that my brother works with out of Joint Base Pearl Harbor, Hickam, Hawaii, who, no kidding, at, at like 10 p.m. Eastern uh, on a Tuesday night, uh, we were having a Zoom call with him. And it was so transformative of a conversation and a meeting that Pat and I left and we put single family aside. We put duplex, triplex, quadplex aside. And we said, we got to go big, go big or go home. And that was kind of the start for us in terms of, all right, we're going to jump in head first, just like we learned how to fly an airplane, just like you, we went to college and, and, and learned about the academics that were challenging for us, but we jumped into, into this. So, um, and, and Pat can probably supplement a little bit in terms of kind of what happened after that, but that was kind of the general start for us. Yeah, it's just, it started out over cigars and whiskeys, just talking about stocks and, and buying and selling stocks and just kind of friendship and it just like Ricardo said I just texted him called him one day and I was like dude we're we're starting a business and we're getting into real estate and he said <laughs> I'm, I'm in no questions asked so that's that's kind of been the, our MO as partnership has gone on it's been Ricardo speaks for me I speak for him the business we're on different time zones different parts of the country but it doesn't matter because Ricardo has to make a decision I trust him to make that decision he trusts me to make the decision. So it's been, it's been awesome. It's a beautiful thing, man. I love it, man. And so one of the common themes that we start to see is that, uh, you know, everybody starts with a perfect idea in mind. And so you guys said, Hey, single family, right. Take it nice and slow one a year, 20 years down the road, we're going to be nice and comfortable, but then it starts to evolve, right. And it starts to evolve and starts to change. And where you guys are now, it may change again in the next three to five years. But the important part is you guys found, a, a path and you started taking action. Now, it, it, I find it interesting that a lot of people on the outside may look in and say, oh, I wish if I could only be a military pilot, if I could only be a military instructor, right? And so they, they see it as this high level of accomplishment, but you guys walking in those shoes, what were some of those conversations on the finance aspect where you said, hey, there's got to be more than just this? Yeah, yeah. I think, I, I think, uh, it was always kind of like, you know, like we, we make a good living, obviously being captains, I'm dual, dual mill, no kids. So two captain pay, like we're doing all right. We're not hurting. But I think it was just, it was just breaking out of that, that kind of mindset. Like you said, like, oh, it must be nice. Like, oh, all those rich guys that own all those uh, real estate and stuff like must be nice, but everyone started somewhere. So I think it was just breaking out of that mindset, reading some books, getting educated, like, and just believing in yourself. And that's why I believe in Ricardo. He believes in me pushing each other. Like if someone's down, bringing the other person up. Uh, so that had really helped. But I think also just being, being honest with yourself, like, all right, can we get this money? Like, where do we get this money? Uh, was a big thing because at, at first we're like, well, how, how do we buy this? Like, where do we get this money? And one thing that we leveraged that is unique to military active duty is we took TSP loans. So that's something that not a lot of people know about, but it's an awesome tool. Uh, so for the listeners that might not know about it, you pay $50 and you can take out half of what you've put in and earned on your TSP, not including any of the agency matching. But so we were able to take out tens of thousand dollars each and you just pay yourself back at the G fund rate, whatever it is, one and a half percent right now. But that money doesn't go to a bank or anything. It goes to you. You're your own bank. So I think that's one of the coolest things that you can leverage as an active duty guy. Take your TSP loan and have access to your money right now. And that really set us up and was huge. We couldn't have done it without that. So I'd recommend if that's something you're interested in, getting smart on it, go on the TSP website, look at the eligibility requirements, understand that if you have a spouse, you're going to need to get them to sign it. It's going to have to get notarized. So it's going to, the process takes a, a couple of weeks, but it's relatively simple and, and very cheap. Definitely. So I kind of want to talk about partnerships a little bit, right? So, I mean, you, you guys partnered up and you, you came together and now you're really building a business, right? Um, what did, and this is, this is to, uh, Pat or Ricardo, either, either one of you, what did you see in each other, right? What did you, um, really value out of each other that, that 
kind of made you come together and was like, hey, this is definitely going to work? Was it mainly you guys have been friends for so, for so long or was there something else that you guys saw in each other? Because I know that there's a lot of listeners out there like, man, I would be great if I could find a partner to, to do, you know, to do what you guys are doing, right? So what was that thing or what were some of those things that helped you guys uh, really sync together and build this uh, vectored equity? <laughs> yeah, man, that's actually, that's, a, that's an awesome question because uh, this is a really critical piece to building your empire, building your business, uh, there's strength in numbers. And in fact, we sent a, an email out to our investor base called Strength and Partnerships just a couple of weeks ago. And the idea that you partner together with somebody, you lock shields with somebody, you guys are familiar with this. You lock shields with somebody and you, and you march forward, you move forward, you're, you're more impenetrable, you're a stronger unit than you are an individual. And so uh, when I met Pat seven years ago, and, and I didn't know it. At, I didn't know it at the time, but the vetting process kind of began. Began. Uh, you you have to vet a partner. You have to identify strengths and weaknesses in that partner, and then the partner has to be on the same page with you in terms of accepting risk and long term vision. Um, so when Pat asked me to do this, he already knew, no doubt, what I was about. I knew what he was about. He's a man of his word. Uh, he follows through with what he says he's going to follow through with. He, his finances are in line. So personal finances are doped out and they're looking good. And that's like a prerequisite, right? Because if you, I, I was listening to this the other day, if you can't manage $5, you're not gonna be able to manage $5 million. You know what I mean? And so uh, Pat had all that taken care of, uh, solid upbringing, uh, cool dude, love to have fun, uh, likes to have fun even still. And so when I looked at the last couple of years and Pat had proposed to me that we wanted to start this business, I already had all my answers. Now I recognize a lot of the, a lot of your visitors and listeners don't necessarily have that. So my recommendation is when you're thinking about a partnership, number one, recognize that you're a human being and you have troughs and you have lulls in your life, right? You'll hit a dip for a week whereby you might be busy, man, you, I might, I have verification training this week. So my mission is going to be a little bit busier, perhaps Pat can, can, you know, kind of uh, compensate on the other side. He can hustle and grind a little bit more. And then the next week we might flip because he might be flying nights and out of pocket at critical times. Um, so I think it's important to rec be transparent with the partner that you want to go into business with, um, vet them appropriately. Uh, and it's like a relationship, right? There are certain things that you can agree with and disagree with, like uh, petty things, uh, shallow things, but the value system, the principles, you have to agree on those. And so think about it in terms of kind of a relationship uh, marriage, if you will. If you agree on those big things and you guys have a general shared vision, then move forward and move forward carefully, especially if you don't know that person and continue to be communicative with them to let them know, hey, look, this is what I'm feeling. What are you feeling? And it's just like Pat said, uh, to kind of close it out, it's it's very autonomous with, with, with the two of us. Uh, if I'm out of pocket, I, I, I trust and I put my stamp on Pat's decision making. He has executive leadership ability to make that decision and vice versa. Yeah, and, and one thing I think that's really important that I kind of touched on earlier is you want a partner who you maybe don't have the same strengths as. You want different strengths and different weaknesses. So like I said, I have kind of the engineering background. Ricardo has a business background. So I'm more on the spreadsheets doing underwriting thinking about taxes and insurance. Ricardo's more thinking uh, about the business, managing the, the property managers, talking to the residents, talking to investors, talking to the, the lenders, doing, doing a lot of the, the interpersonal relations. So, and I'm more kind of the nerding out on the spreadsheets, seeing if the numbers are going to work. And, and that's been really good. And it's, not that I don't talk to people and Ricardo doesn't understand underwriting or doesn't work spreadsheets, but we know our strengths and our weaknesses so we can defer to the other person. So I think that's, that's good. Don't go to someone who's the same as you because you need to offset your weaknesses and be honest about what are your weaknesses, what are your strengths and yeah. vet, vet the partner appropriately. Yeah, and, and, and last thing here, I know we're going long on partnerships, but it's such a critical topic in addition to what Pat talked about with the yin and the yang and, and recognizing and overcompensating, if you are a um, entrepreneur who wants to jump into the game and you don't have any cash, for example, right? You don't have any capital you, and, and you've exhausted all avenues to be creative as, as best as possible, then perhaps you might wanna go into partnership with somebody who has what you don't have. 
somebody who has capital. We talked to a dude the other day who was like, guys, I have more money than I do time. So pitch me a deal and we'll make it happen. That's huge. Those are the dudes that we want that we want to be talking to on the regular. But at the end of the day, I've got some sweat equity here in Tucson. Pat is working underwriting risk analysis. And so if you are going into partnership and you don't have that cash, for example, you don't have the capital, consider finding somebody who, who compensates in that specific arena. Um, it, it, and that's just one little example, but it, it could be uh, emotionally based. It could be uh, geographically based. We like to invest in our backyard in Tucson. Uh, if you want to invest in Little Rock, Arkansas, and you're not in Little Rock, Arkansas, maybe you want to find a partner who's there. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. I think, oh, man. I think that's super critical. And I think Mike said it a couple of times, actually, you know, there's kind of three parts to the deal, the time, the experience, and the capital, right? And if you don't have two of those, you know, are, are pretty much everybody has one of the three, right? And what you, the goal yeah. is to partner with someone else who has one of the other three. And if you can put it together, you make a complete team and, and, and that's what you want to, to close those deals. And that's what's gonna make a, a very complete and, uh, and great partnership, right? So uh, I, like, I like how you put that there. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. The Real Estate Success Bootcamp, the book, it's all about that resource triangle is, is what we refer to it as. And that's exactly right. Now you guys are talking about partnership and the power of just being on a unified front, right? Mm -hmm. uh, making sure that you guys are going in the same direction. But at the same time, you guys are full active duty, married, married, maybe you have kids, right? All these things. How are you actually managing your time doing a full-time active duty military, which is not the, uh, very uh, time light, right? And then yeah. also doing acquisitions for multifamily syndications. Yeah. So, so first and foremost, it's just working hard, you know, so that that's kind of, uh, there's no substitute for hard work. Uh, but I think as we go and we get more experience, we're doing a better job of kind of figuring out how to systematize our business, trying to put those systems in place to, um, to do that. We leverage, like I said, like we've talked about our partnership, being on different coasts, but then we also have a team, you know, we have brokers, we have property managers, we have lenders, and we let those people do their jobs. You know, they're, they're professionals and, and they get paid and we pay them for a reason. You know, our property manager, we we have a great property management team. They have bookkeepers uh, vertically integrated, you know, they have their general construction team. So, uh, but we still take an active approach to managing them. So it's not completely hands-off, but it allows us to, to back up when required and we can press forward if needed. Uh, so I think, I think hiring good people and building a bigger team and realizing it's not just me and Ricardo, Ricardo's wife, uh, Abby, she's awesome. She's IT. So she runs a lot of our website, does, has really made that super awesome like incredible. I, I saw it. I was like, this is our website. Like how much did this cost us? Um, yeah. But so it's, it's awesome. Just realizing who you have in your team and it's not just you or you and your partner. Yeah. I, I think something that's huge with that man is to apply what you know, you know, in, in the military, we know a little bit of rigidity, organization, discipline, right? Punctuality. We, these are, these are tenets and traits that we recognize and understand. So it works in the military vehicle. So put it in this vehicle. So Pat and I have weekly calls, strategy calls, where we talk about near rocks, like nearest threats, uh, what is most important for us to recognize and to work on right now, and then far rocks. What is going to come up in the next month or two in terms of operating expenses? Uh, what can we do to increase our NOI or our net operating income? Um, are we turning a property number 11 because we may have an issue with the tenant? Or how's the roof looking? And so <clears throat> these are things that we um, put some organization to and we kind of tackle and we attack them just as you would any mission. You know, as I prepare for a C EC-130 to go to red flag, uh, we identify who the players are out in the battle space, uh, whether that's um, F-16, Charlie Mike's like, like Pat Flies or, or somebody else who supports the EC-130 electronic attack. At the end of the day, I recognize and Pat does too, hey, look, we're managing the asset. <clears throat> we're taking care of the tenants. Um, how is uh, how are the far rocks looking in terms of capital capital raise for our next deal? And then is our broker relationship the, the way it needs to be? Is our lending in on point? Do we have one in the chamber, if you will? 
And so we just kind of attack it from all different angles. And then the last piece of all that is when you don't have the organization to approach it with, but you recognize moments of your day that you have that are free time, it doesn't require you to sit down for three hours at a time to take care of something. You could be sitting in the waiting room, waiting on the dock, and you got 10 free minutes. Man, I can make a quick call, five-minute call, and that's a very productive call. I could send out two or three text messages. In the age of technology in 2021, there's so much that we have at our fingertips. And for us, what that translates into is productivity. And so at the end of the day, this is not a side hustle for us. This is our job. It's, it's, it's our job just as it is our career that we have in the Air Force. And we treat it that way. And when you treat it that way, the fruits of your labor will come out. There's two things I have to highlight right there. One, the fact that you simply said you translated your military skill into this new venture. And we preach that all the time. So we are blue in the face on the military cash flow community, guys. Literally having these traits, these skill sets, these systems, these organizations, the discipline, the rigidity, all those words that you use, all those adjectives, we can literally pick that up and translate it into any, uh, any venture we decide. And obviously, we, uh, we love real estate here on this channel. But the next piece there uh, was the simple fact that you take opportunities as they're presented. And I think people discount the ability to be very productive in those three to five minutes, right? Uh, you can get a lot more accomplished if you are focused and you have a clear objective versus just sitting down and typing away and blowing up phone calls and answering random text messages like, eh, let me, how about instead of just answering random text messages or scrolling through Instagram, I now direct message the seller, right? Or I have a conversation with the broker to learn about. It. So I had to highlight those two things. Those are key, key for our audience to really take note of and, and move forward with. Yeah, and, and the audience for military members, that's a competitive advantage that you have. Recognize that you have that feather in your cap and move forward with it because it's huge. You know, great, great points. Excellent, excellent points. I want to transition into my favorite part, right? Uh, when we start talking about the deal, all right? So uh, you guys, you guys mentioned you guys just closed on, I think a 14 unit, right? Let's start talking about that because um, I, I know that that is uh, most people's pretty much ultimate goal as far as like, let's say we want to, we want to get into syndication and we want to find a partner. We talked about that and we want to actually do the deal. Let's start talking about some of that and kind of go over that with us, go over the, the rundown and what that looked like for you, for you all. Awesome. So before we talk about the success, I think we, it's important to highlight the failures that have, that have gone before that. So the day after we talked to, Talk to Ricardo's brother's uh, co-worker, the master sergeant, Vince. Uh, we emailed this guy who we, we'd been talking to about his quadplex. And I said, hey, uh, sorry, we're not interested in the quadplex anymore. But if you have anything, eight units or more, let us know. Uh, we'd love to do it. Seven cap, looking for, looking for that. And he said, actually, I do. I got 11 units. And we said, cool. Please send over the details. He sent over the details. We said, we're in. Signed the the contract and we were under contract a week later. So we went from not even thinking about multifamily to under contract for 11 units in a week. So it was kind of a whirlwind. We weren't prepared. We probably were, didn't know what we were getting into. Uh, and the debt service coverage ratio comes back real low because uh, operating expenses are real high. So the bank, the couple lenders we've talked to, they said, we can't lend on this property. And Ricardo and I are pretty new. And we said, well, I guess, I guess that's it. And we get, we, we say, Hey, sorry, we can't get financing for it. And we, we fall out of contract with that. So that was a, that was a bummer. That was kind of a low point. We were like, man, we found this off market deal. This is what everyone talks about. Like we, we did it and, and we let it slip away. And we kind of, we were really upset about that for, for a while. We didn't stop looking, but we kept going back to that. Like, man, we could have been closed by now. We could have had those 11 years. And, but we didn't, we didn't get down and Ricardo brought me up on down days. I brought him up on down days and we just kept going. And on Easter Sunday, I'm, I'm there, you know, at the dinner table, scrolling through LoopNet and Crexy. And, and I send Ricardo a, a message. I'm like, Hey, this property could be the one, like it just showed up. Uh, we got to We got to find out about it. Next day we had the financials. He said, this, this is way better than that 11 unit we almost had. Like this, these are numbers are way better. So offered on it, got it accepted, uh, went through our due diligence and 
man, we closed in uh, 36 days, which is pretty, pretty crazy. Um, but in 2021, <laughs> in, tw- in yeah. 2021, yeah. we closed in 36 days. Uh, we got credit union to fund it. So a little bit more details on that. That was kind of just the highlights. And that all that to say is it's on top of the mountain. You had to, you fell a lot of the ways climbing up there, you know? So when stuff happens, don't get down uh, and just keep pushing on. And it's important to have that person that's able to keep pushing you. But, uh, but yeah, so 14 units, Tucson, right outside of Davis Monthan. It was 100% occupied, built in the 80s. So uh, all two ones or three ones, 750 square foot with one studio, 600. So a couple of things there that really stood out to us. Great unit mix. The two beds and the three beds are really good for that longer term. You know, the, the one beds are more of the transient people move in, move out, single people, not families, not not kids. So that square footage was really good for Tucson, 750 square foot. Most of the things we had been looking at before were all kind of those 500, 600 and, and less. So square footage was good. 1980s build, uh, kind of that right now you're targeting those 80s, 90s builds for those value add um, plays are kind of the, the main targets right now. There's a lot of stuff on the market, 40s, 50s, 60s. You're not sure what kind of the wiring looks like, what's the plumbing look like. So a lot of, a lot of traps in there. So I would say uh, just make sure you know what you're looking at there. We, uh, we did notice that the roof was in really bad shape. So we were able to, to negotiate a few thousand dollars there with the, uh, with the seller. And we actually, that was our number one thing we went in. Uh, $20,000 roof repair, totally resurfaced it twice, uh, put in some undercarriages on our, uh, on our swamp coolers up there, our evapor- evaporative coolers that were on the roof, trying to avoid uh, kind of getting that leak in again. Uh, it's, it's not in the, the best neighborhood, you know, but, uh, but it is right outside the Air Force Base. There's a lot of, a lot of jobs and industry uh, in the area, so we saw that. Um, the last time that there was a vacancy, there were 21 applicants. So that tells me a couple things. One, rent's too low. And then two, uh, there's people are, people are looking for housing and, and the need is there. So we saw a lot of good value add opportunities with it. Kitchens, bathrooms hadn't been redone. So that was kind of our, our big focus on this place. And man, more than anything, it was just great to to get in and, and get that deal going. And we kind of said, well, we don't know now. We'll we'll learn along the way. Yeah. And and just to piggyback on that real fast from the numbers perspective, lending, by the way, we had kind of reached out to so many national lenders because this was our first deal, right? When they asked Ricardo and Pat if we had any experience, our answer was no. And so, but big caveat, no, but guess what? We are Air Force captains who take our jobs very seriously. Here's where, you know, but at the end of the day, they didn't really care about our credit. And that was one of the huge lessons learned we had. They cared more about the property performing. And so that was a huge lesson learned. And so for the viewers out there who were like, I don't know about this, I don't know about that. You just got to jump in. You just got to take action and figure things out. And while you're figuring it out, take notes, write down, no kidding. Like why is a cash offer more important than than a financed offer? Uh, Why does the uh, lending uh, institution not care so much about my credit? because it's based on the property performing, net operating income, right? So um, we cold called so many people, we knocked on doors, uh, we, we kind of tried to make our debut and say, hey, this is Ricardo and Pat, uh, we're trying to get funding for this. And so we were very directive, we were very descriptive about uh, our funding. And so we got to the point to where it was very transactional. I'm seeking a loan for this, this is what I want. And so at the end of the day, it shook out to be a very decent uh, a loan given 2021 post coronavirus. It was a 75% LTV. So we we're going to cover 25% on the down payment. The institution is going to cover the rest of the 75%. It was a 4.25% interest rate. Caveat through further conversation recognized that if we used their institution, their credit union to hold our money to, to like a checking or savings account, they would drop it to a 4% interest rate. So that was a huge win. 
quarter a quarter point is, is pretty decent, right? Uh, one point origination, so kind of the fee uh, post down payment, but we wrap that up into the loan, so less money out of pocket. Um, a 15 year term, uh, so not a five, allows us the buy and hold strategy that Pat and I have adopted um, because we do recognize that we're super busy with our jobs and we're not gonna be able to, we may be able to make a move on it within one to two to three years. But in this case, 15 year term gives us the, the flexibility to kind of draw this out a little bit. So 15 year term with a 25 year amortization. Uh, and so it allows for those tenants to pay down the amortization of the property for us to realize the delta between the principal balance and the equity over a period of time. So at the end of the day, you know, local credit union, building those relationships, continuing to foster them and to let them know to the commercial loan manager at the credit union, hey, if other off-market deals pop up, please let us know. So that coupled with what Pat talked about, it was for us, it was a home run deal with a debt service coverage ratio that was strong performing and positive net cash flow every single month. I think at the end of the day, we ended up on top with that one. And that was a partnership deal between just Pat and I on that one. Yeah, and uh, and one thing about the loan, no prepayment penalty. So as we yeah. execute our business plan, you know, we, re we reposition it, we do the value add. We're hoping to bring that up a few hundred thousand, be able to refinance that in a 12 to 18 months and pull some cash out and do it again. You know, that's, that's that whole strategy, that repositioning those assets. So yeah, it was uh, the lending, huge part of it, because without that, if you get bad terms or short terms, it, uh, it could really hamstring you. To you guys, when you, as you're speaking, it doesn't sound like it's only been a year's journey, right? Some <laughs> of the things you guys are hitting on here are big. Uh, for the people in the audience that know, I, I live in that commercial space, right? So when you're talking about economic drivers, as far as, hey, we had over 21 applicants on this unit. So what did that mean? And a lot of people will say, oh, that there's a need for housing. Ah, but you're seeing that the rents are actually probably a little bit below market standard, mm -hmm. right? Or the fact that, hey, we got a 15 year term and I'm perfectly fine with that at a 25 year amortization period, which is great financing at a 4% interest rate all day, every day. But an inexperienced person would say, well, it's not a 30 year fixed. Well, really in the commercial uh, space, yeah. 30 year fixes, Possible, right yeah <laughs> so, yeah exactly yeah so it's kind of a two-part question here right the first part is where the hell did you guys start to learn this stuff in less than a year that's first part and then i'll wait for the second part you guys go ahead and answer that one yeah so i i think i think like uh like you're saying we uh we have done a, a lot of research and we've been eat sleep breathe multifamily, <clears throat> commercial real estate so that's the first thing. Ricardo and I talk every day. I call him on my way home from work. He calls me later. We talk 30, 60 minutes a day at least. Just, hey, have you called this guy? What did you learn today? And we, we kind of debrief, you know, uh, military, we, pilots especially, we, we do a mission and we debrief. We're, we're kind of the same thing. Like, hey, share with me what you learned. And, oh, I don't know about that. I'm going to go look it up. So we, a lot of research on our own. We've read a bunch of books. Um, multifamily millions, best ever syndication. We're listening to podcasts. We're listening to, you know, military cash flow podcasts. We're listening to um, whoever, you know, <laughs> Rod Khalif, Jake and Gino, Bigger Pockets, whatever it may be. There's so much content out there that if you want it, you can find it, but you have to go find it is kind of the thing. So I'm making my smoothie or driving to work. I'm listening to podcasts and then on my way home, I'm talking to Ricardo, telling him about this podcast. And, and there's no better learning than teaching, right? So when I learn something and I learn about whatever it may be, the simplest thing, debt service coverage ratio, I call Ricardo, hey, what's our, what's our DSCR? He says, what's DSCR? I'm like, well, I just learned about it. Let me, let me explain this to you and see if it makes sense. And then you go look it up. So I think that's really helped us to, to digest and internalize everything is bouncing it off each other, talking to my, my wife, Kristen, who doesn't necessarily, she's not involved necessarily. She's extremely supportive and, and everything. But if I can explain it to her, someone who doesn't know about the space, I think that's a good testament to, do you have the understanding of what it actually is? Love it, man. I love it. I love it. Um, so I have a lot well, of, before you, right, before, right, no, I got the second part, second part, part, that, right, second, real, part. Sorry about, second part to that. 
So uh, what I heard there was basically obsession and accountability. And that's not a bad thing, right? But mm -hmm. a lot of people think that they can do it half-assed and get the same results. So now the second question I have for you, this is part two, with being so inexperienced, if you will, in the, in the space, you move forward with almost no fear. What did you do to overcome the fear or the anxiety about tackling something like a 14 unit for your first deal? Yeah, so if for us, uh, Mike, it's, it was about education. For us, it was Pat and, our, Pat and I already had a, a propensity to jump into the, to the deep end. Uh, we're not scared of that. You know, he and I are type A's who are ready to tackle a task and, and, and uh, tackle a mission and make, make stuff happen. Um, but we, but being smart dudes that we are, we recognize, look, we could do this in a very stupid way, or we could do it in a smart way. We can analyze our risk. We can underwrite this as best as possible. And that's what we did. And we had conversations with people who were smarter than us. Hey, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room, right? So we, we, we find those people uh, in our everyday dealings and talking to the lender. I would talk to Pat and I'd be like, hey, Pat, I talked to an awesome commercial loan manager at, the, at this bank today. He seemed like he was open to other questions. I'm going to try to call him up in the next couple of days, get a couple of questions ready. I'm going to get a couple of questions ready. We're going to approach him. I'm going to write them down and we'll school each other on them. So our education, coupled with our, our propensity to want to dive into the deep end, helped kind of fortify us, if you will, helped mitigate risk that was to come in the future. And so when we did face a challenge, like for example, when I had a, uh, um, a conversation with one of the, uh, the loan officers at, at a bank, I, I would ask a pertinent question, hey, what does post-closed liquidity look like? Do we need to have any of that? And they'd be like, wow, actually, I didn't think of that. Um, not, many people, not many people questioned me on that. And so that's good that you're thinking that way. And so it was just the transparency that Pat and I had and the level of education that we tried to pursue. No kidding, like, man, devour this book in the next week and teach me about it. And I'm going to do the same thing. And so we kind of slowly marched forward, right? How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So we slowly marched forward with this idea that a deal will come. And by the time a deal comes, we're going to have a certain level of understanding that is going to allow for us to play with these dudes on this level. And then we're going to continue to march forward. So it was, it's all a mindset, man. Tony Robbins talks about it. State of mind determines your execution. And if you have a state of mind that is, I belong in that room. I, be, I deserve to have these. Not in a very, not in a selfish, egocentric way, but uh, I put in some work and I would like to see the fruits of my labor and I'm deserving of this. Um, this will come, it will happen. It will come to fruition. It was just a, a concept of th this is out for us and we're gonna go get it and we're hungry and we're not gonna stop until we get it. Yeah, that's perfect, man. I mean, you got, so what I'm hearing is you immersed yourself in yeah. the real estate space. I mean, it's pretty much like learning a different language for the most part. I mean, if you want to learn Spanish, you never, never knew Spanish, you know, you, you go and, and you yeah. speak Spanish with as many people as possible. You listen to the Spanish audio and, and audio books, you know, and you go yeah. talk Spanish with your friends and you keep that in this, you know, keep that at top of mind. Right. And you can learn so much by doing that. And then when it's time to execute, you're, you're you know, you pretty much mitigated your risk that way right yeah that's that's phenomenal man that is absolutely phenomenal there's so many people who um for people who know me i hate excuses i hate excuses right either you're going to do something or you're not okay and a lot of people say that they want to get started now there's nothing wrong if if you don't get started not everybody has to do real estate not everybody has to get their finances in order that's perfectly fine but if you are going to take action you guys are literally laying out a blueprint for exactly how to do that. You took full responsibility of the situation. You devoured information at, as fast as you could. You optimized your spare time to devour information. And then you know what? You held each other accountable. You found an accountability partner. And guys, this is literally, the, I, it can't be explained any other way. This is exactly how I was able to, to do the same thing as well. You guys got to listen to these guys. They know what the hell they're talking about in this, in this <laughs> manner. So I love that. So now that you guys got this first deal locked up, all right, it's, it's operating. And you're actually handling the operations of it. what's next? Where's the next? What's the, I guess what's the idea for the progress of your guys' ventures? Yeah. So so what's next is we just keep we keep learning and we keep growing and then it's the same thing as how we we're approaching it the same way as we approached the first one. Then the next one we will be ready for. So we we realize fourteen is great between us, but a we want to go bigger you know, economies of scale. We want that 50 and 100 plus. 
And then we also want to bring this to our sphere of people that, and try and bring some of this uh, wealth and passive income and cash flow. We want to bring it to, to our friends, to our squadron, to our families, because we see how awesome real estate is and how it can set you up. So the next thing is we're trying to keep on our friends and families and be like, Hey, get educated. I can, I can lead the horse to water, but I can't make him drink. So I tell him, I'm like, Hey, follow our Instagram, like ask me questions, like listen to these podcasts, uh, learn about why multifamily is great because we're going to have a deal soon. Like we're calling brokers. We're looking at properties. Cardo drives a property about once or twice a week. At least we all, we submit LOIs. Uh, weekly, I would say at this point, and there's going to be a deal coming sooner rather than later. And we would love if you guys are, are in it with us, because rather than get a couple people, some, some rich guys richer, we'd rather help our friends and help our family and get everyone involved. And I think that's kind of what's next is just keep growing and trying to help and bringing everyone along with us, like get on board. We're, we're going to the top. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, for us, <clears throat> you, you, everybody talks about, right. Simon Sinek kind of coined it a couple of years ago with, Hey, what's your why, you know? And for us, it's about moving the needle. Uh, Pat and I want to hit it. It's a two pronged approach. It's improving the quality of life for our residents. Uh, while at the same time, unshackling ourselves from the, and, and this is not to be taken out of context for anybody, because this is absolutely what I grew up in, but unshackling yourself from the middle-class mindset that holds you down. This concept of, I'm going to put all my money in, a, in an account until I become 65 or whatever age that is, right? 59 and a half to whatever you decide, and then I'll use it. And then it's a race to see who dies first, you or your money. And that's terrible. Like, I don't, I don't want to live that way. And I'm pretty certain that the majority of the people who are listening to this don't want to live that way either. And so Pat and I are like, we can change things and we can change things for ourselves. And guess what? Once we change things for ourselves, right? Actions speak for themselves. So we talk to all sorts of people now at work, off work who are like, and by the way, tell people what you do. Like tell them, Hey, I'm a real estate, inv I'm a pilot and real estate investor. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to help you out. And it's not banging them over the head with a sales gimmick. That's not what it is. It is an opportunity for you to learn more. And as a result, for you to make some money yourself. And that's the exact approach that we take. If somebody says, I'm not interested in one of your deals, it's all good, man. Thanks for listening. I'm, there's no sweat off my back. But at the end of the day, tell people what you do. And the why, going back to that why, it's improving the quality of life for the residents and moving the needle in terms of our sphere of influence for the people around us, for my brother, for my brother's friend for my friend, for my friend's friend who can, who can recognize and realize that if you have the drive, if you have the ambition, that, that triangle you guys talked about is awesome. I wrote it down, time, experience, capital. If you, have, if you have the drive and the ambition, if the vision, I was listening to a podcast the other day and there was this uh, a retired, not a retired, but a, a surgeon, surgeon a brain surgeon who left his profession to go into multifamily real estate. And he said this, he said, you cannot build that which you cannot imagine. So for me, I think if you imagine something, you have to at least start with a vision, right? Then you work on building it, man. Work from the ground up. What, what is it going to take to uh, put, this in, uh, put this in action? I could talk to him blue in the face about this, guys, but it's because it's a passion for me. It's because I'm obsessed with it. And, and it's just like you talked about earlier, Mike, it's a positive, uh, affirmative, healthy obsession. And that's what you have to have. So if you're hungry, if you have a vision, it doesn't matter if you have money or not. You have a starting point it's like poker. You have a chip in a chair. That's all you need. You know what I mean? And, and what we're talking about is kind of big picture, but we also have more, we have the, yeah. uh, the goals written down in more numbers based. We have that. And, and we, we go back and we reference it. Ricardo, uh, he can tell you about, he wrote down some of our goals when we first started and he looks back and he laughs, <laughs> because of how, yeah. how small they how small they yeah, were and, and how we we're already blowing them out of the water. Yo, show, uh, share them, share them right now, man. You got to let's, let's, yeah, let's, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, yeah. let's get some inspiration going. Let's get some inspiration going. What was the, right. what were the original so, goals? And then let us know what the goals are now. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, and I got these, man, I've got them written out in my garage on a dry race board, like quarter one, quarter two, three, four. Anyways, I'll just give you a quick highlight of some of the goals. And look, these are not to be taken out of context because listen, some dudes probably have some of these goals right now. And, and I'm laughing at myself right now, not anybody else. Um, it was a cash on cash return on investment of at least 6%. It was, <clears throat> us. <laughs> it was close the first single family residence by the end of the year. And by the end of 2022, um, pursue our second single family residence. Uh, and Pat, what do you got, man? Th th these are all in the ballpark. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was like, you know, make a, like $1,000 a year or something in, in cash <laughs> flow. So, you know, something that uh, we're just looking like, oh, well, if we can make like $100 a month uh, yeah. cash flow and pay down the loan. And now we're like 100 million in asset by the time we're out of the Air Force, like, Hundred million, yeah. hundred million under management. Like, get get our next hundred units by the end of the year. You know, like things like that. Where, where like our next deal can't be smaller than our than the deal we just did is is kind of one we have. Um, but yeah, I, I think hundred million by twenty thirty is is our main one right now, kind of our long term goal. But I definitely know a uh, hundred units by uh, in a year. Um, so we, we got some, some loftier goals and, and I'm hoping that in about a year, uh, we can come back on this podcast and we can laugh about how small those goals were. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. That spoke to me big time, dude. Like, cause I was the same exact way, man. I remember I was like, man, I just want to get to, I know I'm on a PCS probably five times throughout yep. my career. So I just want yes. a single family. I just want yes. one single family every single time. So I'm going to have five units by the time I retire, very similar to what you guys said at the very beginning. And then it's like, doom, boom, I, I, I have like 11 doors after the first, you know, two years of trying. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah. um, yeah, man, I, I definitely, definitely, definitely understand that. It's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. You guys are going to get to your goals. I can already tell. So I'm looking yeah, forward yeah, to having yeah. you guys back on and going over this. So. Yeah. Last thing I want to mention with respect to goals, two, 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 two things here. The first part is, you know what? We laugh, we look back and we laugh on those original goals we had, but guess what? We had goals. Like that's huge, man. Like it doesn't matter where you're at, set yourself some goals if for no other reason than to be able to look back and say, those were not the right goals. Um, but if you never set them, you wouldn't be able to say that. The second piece about this is we've heard of this. Have you guys heard of the acronym SMART, the SMART goals? Yeah. Specific, oh, so measurable, measurable, attainable, yeah. reasonable, time specific. Look, I agree with almost all of them, but I it right now I'll nix the R in that because this mindset, you have to have a big mindset, man. It's not reasonable, right? It's, it's, it's unreasonable for me to think a certain way, but in reality, it's actually not. So it's kind of a, it's, it's a weird like trick, but the point I'm trying to make here is this, if you're being really conservative, if you're thinking small, because that's what, that's what, you know, I want to challenge you to think bigger than that. We've heard of Grant Cardone, 10 X, 10, you know, 10 times. There you go. 10 exit, right? Um, he talks specifically about, don't ask yourself, the question regarding, um, or, or don't, don't say, I don't have the money. Instead say, how can I get the money? There's so many people, man. Steve Rosenberg talks about this. He, he's, he's kind of a mentor of ours as a pilot and multifamily investor who kind of says it's the answer is right before your eyes. You just don't know it. The contacts and the investor base is before you. You just need to be able to approach this from a different angle. You need to mission plan this differently for all the finance uh, non-finance uh, rated uh, officers, enlisted personnel. It doesn't matter what you do in the military. If you're doing something, I know you have a mission, whether it's for the Army, Navy, Marines, uh, uh, Coast Guard, Air Force, Space Force now, right? Um, you can approach your mission in the same way. Uh, you can approach your real estate mission in the same way that you approach your, your job mission and achieve a lot of success. You just got to go out on that limb and make it happen. I, I love the, the whole concept behind goals, guys. It's so important because if you don't know where you're going, it's going to take you forever to get there, right? Quickest way is a straight line. Uh, yeah. I think it's Jim Rohn who says, you know, most people overestimate what they can do in one year and far underestimate what they can do in five. And that you guys are living proof of that. Um, and then just one thing on the SMART goals. I agree 100% about the, the realistic. You got to go big, right? 
What I yeah. started using instead of realistic was relative. And what I mean by that is simply if, you know, if your goal is to reach a certain passive income level, right, then your goal shouldn't be, and this is just a very general term here, but it shouldn't be necessarily um, losing body fat, <laughs> right? It has yeah. nothing to do with the, with the relative yeah, yeah. objective. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it just has to be yeah. relative. But uh, I agree 100%. All of my goals are written out. They, they look absurd, right? But it's for a reason, right? Good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You go there. So I love that. And all right, so for, for sake of time, guys, because I'm loving your guys' energy, but uh, I know we're running short here. What would be one piece of advice, all right, that you would be able to give to an active duty service member who is looking to get into, let's just say their next or maybe their first investment? I think it's kind of what we've been talking about this whole time is get educated and take action. You know, there there's a bunch of people that say, I wish I could, or, or I'm... I was going to do that, or I'm, I'm going to do that at some point, I would ask them, why haven't you already? Like, what's, what's keeping you? Get educated and just take action. Just do it. And, and you'll learn, and you might get some bruises along the way, but as long as you get up more times than you get knocked down, like, you're, you're going to win, you know? Yeah. I, I would piggyback on that and say, that every person who has the will and the enthusiasm and the motivation to listen to this podcast has something in them that they are able to contribute to a deal, to an opportunity. And it it, it doesn't, doesn't have to be money. And so if you're thinking in your mind right now, I don't have cash, that's the wrong mindset to have. The mindset is what do I bring to the table? I live in an emerging market. The, the cost of living where I live right now is awesome. And there's an investor out there who would love to invest in Little Rock, in Columbia, South Carolina, in Jacksonville, Florida, wherever you may be. If you live in that place or if you have the will to put the work in, you have a competitive advantage and that's what you bring to the table. Don't sell yourself short. Back yourself up. Be proud of what you bring to the table and be transparent up front. And, and when you do that and you couple that, that, that focus with your will to, to move whatever needle it is for whatever venture you're dealing with, you may get 5% of the deal, but guess what? You got 5% of the deal for just your effort. That's huge. Um, you may get 10 or 15% of the deal. It depends on how that stake uh, ends, uh, flushes out. But at the end of the day, it's a mindset thing, just kind of like Pat talked about. So don't sell yourself short. You have a competitive advantage. Find out what that is and push forward with that as best as you can. Hell yeah. Nice. Nice. Hey, Amen. Um, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy the conversation. Thoroughly enjoy the, especially about goal setting, right? Um, yeah. I, I love talking about that. I love talking about that with my soldiers. I, I just, you know, I can talk about that all day, man. It's awesome stuff. Um, how can our listeners get in contact with you? Best way to get in contact with us, uh, our socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Instagram is kind of our main one right now. VectoredEquity.com uh, is our website. Vectored at Vectored Equity for all our socials. So uh, super easy. Patrick at Vectored Equity. Ricardo at VectoredEquity.com. Send us an email. Uh, so we'd love to we'd love to talk, especially uh, all the active duty guys that might be uh, might be trying to get started or passively invest actively invest whatever it might be uh we'd love to love to talk and uh reach out um we're always here uh we've got both coasts so one of us should be uh checking our instagram at least yeah and and last thing on that is in in av when i'm flying from the left seat or when pat's flying uh or or mission planning there's something called a vector check i don't know if you guys have heard of it before but essentially it's a means of Somebody saying, "Hey, give me a vector check. Let me know if I'm on the uh, if I'm uh, on the right page here." Uh, a vector is navigation. It's accuracy. It's timeliness. It's direction. And so we have a vector check on our website um, that is being built up. It allows for a user or or a visitor to get online and say, "You know what? I want a vector check. I don't I don't have a large sphere of influence. Um, bigger pockets may not be responding, or or one agency may not be giving me." that third party neutral perspective, right? It's, it's a, it's a, we're not necessarily a friend that you've known, but we're more than happy. And this is not superfluous. This is not a shallow, this is an absolute. We will give you 15, 20 minutes of our time to go over your potential deal and talk to you about 
uh, give you our, our uh, objective thoughts on it. And so I encourage uh, somebody to visit our, our website, go through the vector check. If you got a deal you're looking at, I don't care if you're going to burr the, the property or if you're thinking about a quadplex or investing in a larger j joint venture JV or a syndication, please give us the opportunity. We're more than happy to help you. Uh, and, and it's something that is, is an is a opportunity right now that we're, we're small enough to do that. That's a huge value, dude. That is a huge yeah. value. Yeah. That, that, that's awesome. The vector check. You know, I'm an army guy, vector but now check. I know what the vector is, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So again, man, we, we thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy the conversation. Um, appreciate you guys coming on the show. Um, if you're listening to this, please uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment down below there for uh, Ricardo and Pat at Vectored Equity, not Vectored Capital. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> no, so you say it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, I kept messing it up at the beginning, though. So you guys probably won't hear that at the beginning. But um, for um, leave them a, leave them a comment down below. I'm sure they'll answer. Also, uh, you can hit them up in the Military Cash Flow Facebook group. I believe they're both members as well. So if you got any questions about how that goes, and definitely take opportunity, take uh, advantage of that opportunity of giving them a call or going to the website, excuse me, and uh, getting a vector check, man. That's 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 pretty dope. Um, other than that, you got anything, Mike? No, I uh, thank you guys both for coming on. I think you dropped a wealth of knowledge, especially when it comes to mindset and getting started. And you guys are a living example of how that dedication can literally accelerate your growth. And you guys are just at the beginning. I'm ready to see where this, where this journey goes. So we want to have you back on so we can see what that, uh, how you demolished those goals that you guys have as well. But thank you guys again for taking time out um, and, and just sharing your story with the, with the community. Thanks, Thanks for the guys. opportunity, fellas. Nice meeting you guys. Appreciate it. All right. And with that, this is Dan Wynn. And Mike Glasby. Signing off. <laughs>